Mexico is filled with breathtaking shorelines, bringing vacationers from all over the world. Some beaches are filled with people and others are quiet and secluded. Depending on what you like to do in Mexico, party, play, or relax, there's a beach waiting for you to enjoy. The beach we're painting today invites you to play. Welcome to Createful Art, a place where you can relax, explore, and learn how to paint. Let's begin. So let's go ahead and grab our paints and our supplies. The list of them are in the description of this video. And if you have the lesson plan that goes along with this video, they're in there as well with color mixing help and all the fun things that go along with this lesson. Step number one, we're gonna paint the ocean. So start with your wash brush and your teal color. And you're gonna cover the top third of your canvas with this color using choppy brush strokes. So add a layer of blue right under the teal using the same brush and the brush strokes. That's it for this step. Great work. Now we can go on to the next step. In this step, we're going to paint the sand in the bottom part of our canvas here. So go ahead and just add that color to the bottom of your canvas that is still white. And it can be loose, playful, fun, relaxing brush strokes. And we can add this color all the way up until we meet the blue. Just don't mix with the blue. You don't want to touch the blue, otherwise your light tan color will start turning blue. Now you want to add more brown to your color and add a darker layer that's a curvy line just below the blue ocean, about the thickness of your brush. Next, add a thin curvy line of that color using the flat edge of the brush below the thicker line, leaving some of the lighter tan in between. Clean out your brush and then we can go on to the next step. In this step, we're adding details to the ocean and the beach. So we can add another layer to our color so we don't see as much brush marks. And then we're gonna add black to this wash brush and add it to the top portion of the ocean to make it darker. We're gonna use more paint at the top for more coverage and then let it thin out as we go towards the blue, blending it slightly, leaving though a choppy look that still shows the blue. So I just did a little bit of blending over this part and this is the look that I want. I want it to be not smooth looking, but just a little bit softer choppy look. Okay, so now I'm taking that little bit of blue and I'm adding some underneath the blue, but you can see the tan of the sand underneath. So we're adding this as a glaze. All right, great, my friends. Let's wash out that brush and then grab your filbert brush and we're gonna add white to that brush. We're gonna use the end of this brush to create broken up white lines along the edges where the blue meets the dark tan for the look of foam. You can see the reference photo in the lesson plan or the workshop to help you. So there's no right or wrong way that your foam is when it's interacting with the ocean. So you can have little just dots here. You can even splatter a little bit if you'd like, which I'll show you later on. You can have as many layers as you want, but here's the key to it. It's not a straight line across and it's not a solid line. I go ahead and add a little bit of blue to my white and some water. And I'm just tapping my brush just like this. I may need to get a little bit more color on there, but this seems to be working. I'm getting splatters here. That's the look that you want to have some of those foam areas back into the ocean. So this is where your preferences come into play. If you have too many splatters, you can always take some off with a paper towel or you can add some in if you don't have enough with just a detail brush. Wow, you are doing great. We are almost done with this step. Go ahead and grab your detail brush. Or you can use the tip of your round brush. So we're gonna add some of the dark brown to the tip of that brush. And we're going to add in some small little shapes here. And some of them will look like dots. Some of them will be like kind of a blob shape. It doesn't matter because basically what you're doing is you're getting the look or the impression that there are people 
or objects out here. So I guess it could be a bird, <laughs> but mostly there are people out here playing in these waves, jumping over the waves, swimming, hanging out with their friends, hanging out with family, or they're just having some nice alone time. This is a great time to be creative. You don't need to add as many people as me. You can have less, you can have more, you can have them in different places on your painting. It doesn't need to be exactly the way that mine is. And so I invite you to be creative and just add in some dots and some shapes on the sand and in the ocean the way that you want. So you can be on the sand, so add some dots on the sand. And there's just a little shadow area that's following the people that are on the sand. On the right side, you can see in the reference photo where I'm adding it. So anytime I add a little dot, I also add a little bit of shadow. Again, this is a great time to get creative. You could add whatever colors you want, whatever shapes you want, just have fun with it. And once you're done with that, it's a great time to take a break if you need one. And then we can move on to the next step together. In this next step, it's optional to use the traceable that's in the lesson plan that goes along with this video to help you get the umbrellas onto your painting here and have them look great and be proportional. In this step, we're adding the finishing details and we're painting the umbrellas. So we're gonna add the dark brown to our round brush and we're painting circular shapes for the shadows of the umbrellas first. And they don't need to be perfectly round. You can add a line and a couple of dots too for a volleyball area if you wish as well. You can get creative with this stuff. You don't have to have your umbrellas in the exact same spots as mine. You can make yours closer together or you can make them further apart. You can have less, you can have more. You can create a gap between them so maybe that's where people like to walk out to the beach. Just whatever you wanna do, this is the time to just let go, be creative. If you've used the traceable, you can just fill in your circles, which is really, really simple. <laughs> Makes the lessons really, really nice to have those traceables because sometimes this can be the harder part, especially if you are struggling with drawing. So younger kids and beginner artists can use the traceable to help them. Or this is a great time to take your skills to the next level and to be creative, not have to do everything exactly like mine. It's just pushing yourself to follow your own personal preferences. Now I'm gonna use whatever brush I need to get the shape I want. So the flat brush for this and any color I'm gonna grab blue for this first one and I'm just adding some shapes next to the shadows. So these can be blankets, these can be coolers, these can be sand toys, whatever it is you want. So I'll work on adding the blue and then I'll add another color to my brush. Whenever I wanna add another color, I just wipe the color off on my paper towel. I don't need to wash out my brush completely. And I just go from color to color adding some shapes. Again, let yourself relax. Just start adding things. Next, let's focus on the umbrellas. I have a clean round brush and I'm gonna grab any color. You can grab whatever you want. I'm gonna start with red and I'm just painting in a circular motion to the size of the umbrella. So just a small round and Notice the placement of the umbrella. So the shadows in that upper right side of the circle. So some of the colors will be transparent that you use. And so you'll need to add more layers because you'll see the shadow and you don't wanna see the shadow through the umbrella. The umbrella is gonna be over the shadow. So you may need to add additional layers, which is just fine. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna focus on either one color at a time adding the umbrellas or you're gonna just switch off from whatever color you feel like. Just go from one to the next. Just add whatever color you want, wherever you want. This is a great time to again, be creative. And don't worry about adding the details onto the umbrellas yet. And if you've used the traceable and you've put the sketch onto your canvas, it's really easy. You just know where each circle is and you're just basically filling in those circles. 
So use that traceable if you need it to help you relax. Or if you don't need the traceable, just allow yourself to be creative and relax that way. Once you have the first layer of your umbrellas, you need to let them dry and then you can go back over them with an additional layer. And you can also put in other details while you're waiting for those umbrellas to dry. So I want you to look at my reference photo and from my reference photo, look at what you don't like from it and don't add that. And then look at what you do like and make sure that's a part of your painting. And you can also look up some more pictures of the bird's eye view on the beach to get some ideas for maybe the details on your umbrellas or some other things that you might see from that to get some ideas of how to be creative or to come up with your own ideas. You don't have to have a picture. So once you have your umbrellas a solid color, they're dry, they're the colors that you want, then you can add details to your umbrellas. You don't have to add details to all of your umbrellas. It can be a solid umbrella. So you can add like circles, little dots in the middle of the umbrella look like the top of the umbrella. You can look at my reference photo to see some ideas. You can look at umbrellas online to see some more ideas. But you can see that I've added some star shapes and those are the striped umbrellas. Um, you can add additional colors instead of just using white. If at any moment you struggle to paint along with me or you're just a beginner, I have a workshop that will help you paint this with me. It includes color mixing help, reference photo, traceable, step-by-step -step instructions, and the full real-time tutorial, which is about 45 minutes to an hour long. If you'd like that workshop, just let me know in the comments. I'll send you a direct link. And there's also one at the end of this video. There are so many more beach and ocean paintings that I have for you that you can enjoy with me. And I hope you really enjoyed this one. Here are the favorite beach and ocean painting tutorials. You can go ahead and watch the next one. You can also click this link here that takes you over to createflart.com where you can sign up for my five free art lessons that are gonna help you become a better painter. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this lesson and be sure to hit that subscribe button, the bell next to it so that you can get notified whenever I make a new tutorial for you.